Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 Oh, Jesus. 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 Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Precious greetings to you, uh, dear family. Precious greetings. Uh, it's good to have you. It's good to have you uh, one more time at the table of the Lord. Uh, Mandy ever smiling. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you, good to see you here, my Jesus. Uh, Shelly, how are you? Good morning to you too then. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are welcome, you are welcome, our dear family. Wherever you are tuning in from, let me take this opportunity to welcome you. Remember always, Distance is not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. Wherever you are, God is right there. We are connected in the Spirit. So you are welcome to this encounter. You are welcome to this gathering. Carly, how are you doing? Welcome at this gathering. And God has something for us today. Oh my God. It's a day that the Lord has made. It's a day that the Lord has made. Thank Him for His new mercies. Bible says His mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. Thank you so much for those that are sharing already. Join those that are sharing to share this broadcast. Join those that are sharing to share this live. Bring somebody onto this live. My God. Bring somebody, bring somebody. Bring somebody, bring somebody onto this live. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. There is sufficient grace supplied for that situation you are facing. Sufficient grace for that circumstance that you are facing. Sufficient grace for that mountain that you are facing. Oh my God. Mr. I say, how are you doing, uh, man of God? It's good to see you, and uh, I do believe and trust that you are well, and the family, uh, it's good to see you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful, wonderful man of God. I am glad and honored to have you. Oh, Jesus. Family, let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share. Let's bring as many people as we can to this gathering. It's an encounter. I always say this, it's not a program, it's an encounter. You can have a program and remain the same, but an encounter will surely and definitely change your life. I believe we are not having a program here. We are having an encounter. If we were having program, I think by now we were supposed to be tired Programs, they tire you. Programs, they exhaust you. But encounters, you want to have more of them. Uh, my Mish, is it my Mish? Yes, how are you doing? It's good to see you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Encounters, keep, keep on. You feel like you want more of them because something happens. Something happens. Wherever you come for an encounter, something changes. 
something moves. Good morning, Emily. How are you doing? Something moves and something changes. Today we believe God that something is going to change. Something is going to move in your life. As we hear the voice of God, as we hear the voice of God, Rabba Soko Bokasaya. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead, go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Don't stop. Come on, somebody. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go ahead and share. Don't stop. Keep on sharing. Keep on sharing. Keep on sharing. For the Lord is right here. His presence is right in the house. I want you to keep sharing. My Jesus. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. Keep sharing, keep sharing. We are going to have a time of hearing the word. And uh, we are going to have that time of hearing the word of God. God speaks to us through his word. As we hear his word, he is providing answers through his word, providing solutions through his word. So when we hear the word of God, God is talking to us. And when we are praying, we are talking to God. The, the biggest problem and the biggest challenge, or can I call it the biggest temptation, is that we, would, we love to speak to God. We love to speak to God a lot, but we are not available to allow Him to speak to us. We are so good in throwing things to God, throwing things to God, request, 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 petition, uh, petition, request, but we, are, we, are, we have not been so good in listening to what God is saying. Listening to what God is saying. God is always saying something. In your situation and God's opinion matters in that situation you are facing it doesn't matter how dire the situation may be at least so bless you dear daughter doesn't matter how the situation feels or the situation looks God has is still saying something God is still saying something and be willing to hear what God is saying. Be willing to hear what God is saying. Be willing to hear what God is saying. Many times we just want things to shift on our side. Shalom, Tsepe, how are you? We want things to change on our side, but we are not interested in what God is saying. Every time you go in the presence of God, God responds. But half the time, if not more, we don't get the response. We don't get the response because our own is to have our situation change. Our own is to have the situation change. Our own is to see our condition getting better. So in the process, we will not pay attention to the voice of God. We will not pay attention to what God is saying. Esther, how are you doing? God is saying something in that situation. God responds every time we go in his presence. He responds. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. He responds. He responds. Seek to hear God's opinion. Don't seek only to see change in your situation. Seek to hear God's opinion. You, we, are, we are frustrated. We are frustrated. We are frustrated. We are so frustrated, my God. Mm. 
Hebrew, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse, verse 1. Why are we frustrated? It's because we think that God is not talking. He's not saying anything. God is ignoring. He's saying something. But we have no listening ear. We have no listening ear. Let's read chapter 1, 2, and 3. I will stand upon the, my watch and set me upon the tower. Listen to this. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Habakkuk is saying, I want to stand upon my watch. I want to stand upon my tower. I want to hear what he will say to me. I want to hear what he will say. I want to hear what he will say. His main goal is to hear what, what God is going to say. And remember what God said. Remember what God answered to him. The answer that God gave to him. He said, write. And the Lord answered him and said, write the vision down. That was the answer that God gave him. Write the vision down. For the vision is for an appointed time. For the vision is for what? It's for an appointed time. That is the answer that God did. He said, I will stand upon my watch. I will stand upon my tower. And I want to hear what you will say. And what I will answer when I'm reproved. When you stand upon your watch. When you stand upon your, 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 your tower. Let me explain. The tower is a place where watchmen would, would, would be sitting. Watchmen would go on a high tower. What was the... the, 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 the uh, the duty of a watchman. 769, how are you doing? The duty of a, of a watchman was to see the enemy from afar and warn the nation or warn the kingdom, warn the people. Bless you, Anna. Warn the people if there is any danger. If danger is coming, the watchman was the first to see that danger. And they warned the people that there is danger looming. There is danger coming. And the people would do, know what to do. <clears throat> the watchman, the minister of a watchman, or the duty of a watchman. <clears throat> so the watchman's duty was to see the enemy before he is closer. He had to see the enemy from afar. So that people have enough time, people have ample time to, to react, they have ample time to do something about the enemy that is approaching. Thank you so much, uh, Mancha. How are you doing? Oh my God. We need the eye of a watchman. We need um, to be watchmen. We need to stand on the tower. We don't have to be caught by surprise. God must raise you as a watchman of your family, a watchman of your nation, a watchman of your people. You need to be, God is looking, still looking for watchmen that can stand on the tower. The Bible talks about a man standing on the gap. I believe you can't stand on the gap if you are not a watchman. That Bible, that, that, that scripture in Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 30, I believe, yes. I looked for a man who could stand on the gap. But I could not find anyone. Uh, Tino Tend, how are you doing, Dot? I looked for a man that could stand on the gap. How do you stand on the gap if you are not a watchman? To stand on the gap means to intercede, to, uh, in order to avert judgment. You can see that danger is coming. You stand on the gap. For you to be able to stand in the gap effectively, you have to see things before they come. You have to have eyes that see the hurt. That's what makes you effective. To stand on the gap, that means you have Abraham need to stand on the gap. When God told Abraham, I am going to look at Sodom. I'm going to see at Sodom and Gomorrah and see what is going to happen there. And the Lord said, we are going to destroy if we don't find the righteous people there. We are going to destroy with fire. Abraham stood on the gap. Why? He, he, he knew what was going to happen. Well, before time, God revealed to him that there is danger that is coming to the nations. There is danger that is going to come. 
Oh my God, the kept woman, bless you, bless you. We, we, we have to revive the ministry of a watchman. I don't know whether I can call it a ministry or I can call it a, uh, the work of a watchman. But let me call it a ministry. We need people to rise as watchmen. Stand on the tower and see what is happening in the realms of the spirit and declare, oh my God, God spoke to Ezekiel. He said, behold, I made you, I've made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. You shall hear my word and give them warning. And God even said to Ezekiel, if you see any problem, if I tell you there is danger coming and you don't tell my people, their blood shall be upon your hand. This can get so serious. In fact, this is so serious. Do you realize that God is going to say, Paul, for some of the things that we did not do? When we were supposed to do certain things. Remember, there is sin of commission, but there is also sin of omission. You are not going to be judged by for sin of commission. Sin of commission is the sin that you commit. You commit that sin. There is also what is called the sin of omission. Sin of omission is when you were supposed to do something and you don't do it. That's a sin. Sin of omission. Most of us here, we, are, we might not be committing sin. We might be living righteously before God. That is wonderful and I praise you for that and I thank you for doing that. Keep doing that. But there is sin of omission. Madam Sile, so good to have you. Emmanuel, so good to see you. Where you, you're supposed to do something. I've had encounters where God would hold me accountable of something that I did not do. And it would trouble me. And if I feel like I did not do something that God wanted me to do, sometimes I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep. And I begin to shake. Sometimes I lose peace of heart. I don't have peace of heart. I say, there's something that is taking. It looks like there is something that I didn't do. I begin to search and I find out maybe I was supposed to pray for that person. Maybe I was supposed to call that brother. Maybe I was supposed to help that brother. Maybe there are times that I would literally have some, literally I would feel like I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And I begin to check. Am I sick? I'm not sick. But I'm not okay. I check, I check, I check, I search, I search in my spirit. I find out, oh, that issue, I did not attend to it. So we need to revive the ministry of a watchman. And I want you to know, God is going to hold us responsible for sin of omission. That means something that you were supposed to do. Michelle, how are you? Janet, how are you? You were supposed to do it and you resisted. God is telling you, do this, you resist. And there are many times we have had those encounters. You know, I'm uh, myself included. You know, there are times that God will tell you, help this person. And then you say, God, but you, you're not sure. It was, help this person. Uh, DJ, how are you doing? Um, help this person. Maybe you have the last money in your pocket or maybe you are not even at your best financially, but God says, help this person. And you say, ah, oh, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. You say, I can't do it. But God is telling, help this person now, now. Help him now. How many of you have had those encounters? Mm, thank you so much for the gifts, uh, DJ. God bless you. Sin of omission. Sin of omission. This is when you are supposed to do something and you don't do it. And God begins to hold you responsible. Do you know the definition of sin? It's not necessarily the laws that are written only. How okay, I bless you. Listen, let me tell you something. The definition of sin. Okay. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, whatsoever, whatsoever is not of from faith is sin. Whatsoever is not from faith is sin. Whatsoever is not from faith is sin. That means everything you do out of faith becomes sin. This is not sin of commission. Whatsoever is is not of faith or is not from faith is sin. The Bible says if you are going to eat food, okay, let me slow down. If you are going to eat food, the Bible says someone eats meat, somebody eats meat and uh, all the meat because they have faith. They have faith. They can eat everything. 
And the Bible says, but he that is weak in faith eats only vegetables. And the Bible says, don't despise that one. Because if you are going to eat something, you have to eat it by faith. You know, even what you eat, you have to eat it by faith. The moment you doubt, the moment you don't have faith, don't eat it. Because if you do that out of faith, whatsoever is not from faith is sin. Meaning to say, for you to eat something, you need faith. You need, you need faith. If you eat something without faith, you are actually committing sin. I don't know if it's making sense. If God says, sit down, sitting down is not a sin. Sitting down is not a sin. But if God says, sit down, and you don't sit down, it becomes a sin. It becomes a what? A sin. But sinning, sitting down is not a sin. God says, stand up, and you sit down. It becomes a sin because you are in disobedience to the instruction of the master. And disobedience to the instruction of the what? Of the master. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Oh my God. So there is, there is this man who was a king of Israel. His name is Josh. I want to give you an example. Josh being the king of Israel. He had that Elisha was sick. Bible says Elisha was sick with his own sickness. I don't know why the Bible call it his own sickness. Maybe it's something that was self-inflicted. I don't know. But the Bible says Elisha was sick with his own sickness. The Bible does not mention its name. It says his own sickness. Maybe he personalized the sickness. Just me trying to go far and wide in the scripture. Why does the Bible call it his own sickness? The Bible does not specify. It says Elisha was sick with his own sickness. I just wondered. I'm still wondering. But I think that it's a sickness that he it is that he personalized, I believe. And the Bible says Elisha was sick and was, was, was about to die. Joash, the king of Israel, went to see Elisha. And he came there and he cried. He said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. My father, my father. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. That was a salutation. And Elisha was moved with compassion for Joash, being the king. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? Take a bow and arrow. Take a bow and arrow. You know a bow and arrow. Take a bow and arrow. And Elisha instructed Joash, who was the king, to take a bow and an arrow. Joash took a bow and arrow. And Elisha put his hand on the end of 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 of, of Joash and he said shoot the arrow by the window and Joash shot the arrow by the window and Elisha declared he said the arrow of the Lord the arrow of deliverance from the Syrians the arrow of the Lord the arrow of deliverance from the Syrian mm. Christ be delivered from that witchcraft fear not he said, the arrow of the Lord, the arrow of deliverance from the Syrians. This is the declaration of the prophet. He's putting his hand on the hand of Josh. My God. Elisha gave an instruction to, to George. I want you to listen to me. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to this. Elisha said to George, shoot on the ground. George took the bow, the, the bow and arrow. He shot the first time. He shot the second time. He shot the third time and he stopped. He stopped. And Elisha was so mad at him. Elisha was mad at George. He said, why did you shoot three times? Why did you shoot three times? You were supposed to shoot more than three times, seven times, five times. You were supposed to keep on shooting because every arrow represented victory against the Syrians. Every arrow, as you are shooting on the ground, you are representing victory. Every arrow represented victory. Kalabasakaya. Don't worry. I'll speak to you. God is with you. Victory. Victory. I speak victory. And that peace over your heart. Fear not. God is with you. My Jesus. My Jesus. Listen. 
And the prophet said, you should have shot on the ground five, seven times. Why did you shoot three times? Now you are going to defeat the Syrians only three times. Only three times. So this was a prophetic instruction. This was a prophetic instruction. And this was a prophetic action. Prophetic action. A prophetic action is something that you do. But it has got a spiritual significance. It has a spiritual significance. Prophetic action. So I want you to understand. God wants us to revive the ministry of a watchman. He said, I will stand upon the wall. I want to hear what God is saying. The opinion of God matters in that situation you are. God's opinion matters. My Jesus. Standing on the watchman, on, on, the, on the tower. Stand on the tower. I pray for you today. May God give you the eyes of a watchman. See things from afar. Never be caught by surprise. May God give you the eyes of a watchman. See things from afar. And the tower is a high place. The tower is a high place. A watchman could not see things when he's, when he's just in the same level with others. Dennis, how are you? A watchman had to be on a tower. You have to be in a high place in order for you to see what is coming. You can't see things that are coming from afar if you're in a lower place. How do we build that tower now? Prayer is our tower. Prayer is our tower. Prayer is our tower now. You don't necessarily need to climb a higher place now. How do you climb a higher place? How do you reach the highest altitude? You have to live in prayer. The more you live in prayer, prayer elevates you. Prayer is a tower that elevates you so that when things are coming, you cannot miss them. You will not miss what is coming. You will know what is coming if you live in prayer because prayer is a tower. Build that prayer tower. Or how can we put it? How can we build this tower? By prayer, by prayer, by prayer. As you live in prayer, you are putting yourself in a higher altitude. You will see things that are coming. Before they happen, you will see them. You will know what is happening. You will not be caught by surprise. God wants you to be a watchman. God wants you to be a watchman. I don't know. You will know even what the enemy is planning. You will know the enemy from afar. You will know what the enemy is planning and engage. Cancel it. Get in prayer. Get in prayer. Oh my God. Get in prayer. A, a, a man of the spirit must not live in the presence only. Dennis, may God touch you. A man of the spirit, a woman of the spirit must not live in the presence only. They must be able to travel. 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 He said, I will stand upon my watch. I will stand upon the tower. Habakkuk chapter 1. And I will listen. I will hear what God has to say. I will hear what God has to say. I want to hear what he has to say. And God said, write the vision down. Write the vision down. For the vision is for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. Write it down. Write it down. So that he that read may run. So that he that read may run. The other version says that he that runneth may read. I don't like that version. 
Because there are people that run. You can't run before you read. You have to read first. Read and run. Read and run. I like that vision. So that he that readeth, run. There are many people that are running right now, but they have not read. Nick, receive that call in Jesus' mighty name. There are many that are running, but they have not read. There are many that are running right now, but they have not read. The Bible says, write the vision down, so that he that readeth, run. Don't run before you read. It reminds me of uh, Imaz. What was the name of the other guy? Oh, my Bible. I'm forgetting. Imaz and the other one. David, it was, jo it was Joab. Joab is trying to send people to give David tidings of the war. Like to give da David on that day. Jo Joab was the army general under David's uh, army, David's kingdom. I pray for you. He will just go back to work in the name of Jesus. May God make a way for you to go back to work. Joab has defeated the enemy. This was the time when, when, when David's son, Absalom, rebelled against his father, David. Absalom rebelled against David. He took part of the army, took part of Israel, and he started fighting his father. Joab went on to fight against the Absalom, who was David's son, who had rebelled and fighting against his father. I hope you read Bible. So now Job is fighting and David gave an instruction to Job. He said, please show mess on the young men. Just make sure you subdue the soldiers and bring the young men alive. David wanted to preserve the young men's alive because this was his son fighting against him. My Jesus. So now, yes, please, you need to read. So what happened is, the war went on, the war went on, and Absalom was caught up by the tree. He was caught up by the tree, and the horse ran under a tree. And Absalom was caught by the head in the thicket, and he was left hanging. The, the, the horse that he was riding ran through and left him hanging. And when Absalom found, uh, when Job found Absalom hanging, he shot him with the arrow and he died. And then all the soldiers that were following Absalom ran away. They ran away. And the war was over. Meaning to say, Absalom was defeated and was killed against David's instruction. So Joab wanted to send a message to David to say, the war is over. Unfortunately, your son is dead. And there were two men. One man that Joab sent, he said, go tell the king. But there was another one who was called Imaz, who ran. And Joab said, don't go. You don't have tidings. Don't go. You don't have tidings. Don't go. He ran without tidings. He, in other words, he had no correct details of what transpired. But he just wanted to go and deliver news. And Job said, don't run. You don't go because you don't have tidings. You don't have correct details of what transpired. You don't have tidings. I think we need to speak to young preachers who, when they just know a few scriptures already, they are running. They don't have enough tidings. They are already running and doing a lot of things without proper training. Time spent on preparation is never time wasted. Even if you have a calling, wait for the for the for the right for it to ripe. Doing things before jumping too quick can spoil the whole thing. The vision is for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. It, it, wait for it, though it tarries, it will surely speak. The vision is for an appointed time. So there are young men that when they have a few faces, they know they just run now. They start to, to do the way they start to, they are just starting to do a lot of things without proper training. That can bring a lot of disasters. So Job said, you don't have news. Let this person go now. That he has got news. He has got tidings. And guess what? That person, two people went and that young man insisted. He said, let me go. And Job said, okay, go. 
So two people are going to David to deliver tidings. And this one that had no news ran faster and overtook the one that had tidings. And when he arrived before the king, the king asked him, tell me what happened? Tell me what happened? He said, I'm running, I'm coming from the battlefield. The war was fought and I saw a great tumult. There was a great noise there and there was a great noise. And this David says, what happened? He said, you know what? What happened to the young man? Is my son okay? He said, I just saw a great tumult, but I don't know what happened to the son. I don't know what happened to your son. And uh, I'm not sure. David said, stand aside. Do you see that? He ran and overtook the person. That had news. Denise, may God comfort you. He ran and overtook somebody. So sometimes you can run without proper and correct details. That's why the Bible says, write the vision down so that he that read may run. Read, 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 read before you run. Read before you run. Be equipped. If you have a ministry right now, you have a calling upon your life, get time to be equipped. Get time of preparation. Time spent on preparation is never time wasted. Am I talking to you? spend on preparation it's never time wasted are you here are you, are you still here people of god tap on the screen come on come on let me see you talking to me time spent on preparation is never time wasted take your time to prepare you know that jesus was god from the, from day one Jesus was God from the time he was born. Jesus was the Christ from the time he was born. But guess what? Jesus took 30 years. 30 years of preparation. 30 years of preparation and he took 3 years of ministry. And look at how effective his ministry was. 30 years of preparation and only 3 years was enough for him to accomplish a phenomenal ministry whose ministry can reach the level of the ministry of Jesus. But look at Jesus, 30 years of preparation, three years of ministry. Somebody was asked, what will you do if you are given an ax to chop a tree down or to cut a tree down? Somebody said, I, I, maybe you, you are given three hours of chopping a tree. Thank you so much, Jeanette, for, for that. You're given three hours of chopping a big tree. Somebody says, I'd rather take another hour sharpening my eggs. Take, I will take an hour sharpening my eggs. Sharpening my eggs. I would rather use one hour to sharpen my eggs. Sometimes we are busy trying to chop with the eggs that is blunt. That's why we are frustrated. We are using a blunt eggs. We are using a method that is not working. Sometimes we are trying to deal with things. There are times you need to go in prayer. Sometimes just stop doing everything and just go in prayer. Sharpen the eggs. Sharpen the eggs. He said, I'll take an hour sharpening the eggs. And then two hours of chopping. Some people will just like to go and chop that tree. You just go try to chop the tree. And you are suffering because you are using an axe that is blunt. Oh my Jesus, I don't know if you are understanding. This is purely spiritual language. Prepare! Prepare! How do you know that you, 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 you are ready for marriage? You prepare your heart. You prepare your heart. You work on your heart. Patience, long-suffering, understanding, endurance. These are characters. These are attributes you need to carry along in marriage. Marriage is not a place of hyper feelings. It's not a world of hyper feelings. Come on, somebody. That's not a place of hyper feelings. Feelings will just last maybe for a few times. It's a place of wisdom and understanding. You don't build marriage by feelings. You don't build it. Actually, love alone is not sufficient to sustain a marriage. Come on, somebody. Love alone is not sufficient to sustain a marriage or a relationship. I've heard people that said, I love him, but I can't be with him. I love that woman, but I can't be with him. You say you love him, but why can't you be with him? You know what, man of God, the lack of understanding. She does not understand. He does not understand. Though I love him. So do you realize that love alone will not keep a marriage? There are people that are in, that are in love, but they chose to part ways. Though they are in love, they said, you know what? I think it's good for the good of the two of us. Let's just part ways. Though we are in love, but let's part ways. We are not good for each other. 
So love alone, my brother, my sister, we will not keep a marriage. What keeps a marriage? There is understanding. There is endurance. There is tolerance. There are many things. There are many things. It's not even feelings. Because feelings fluctuate. MSK, bless you. Feelings fluctuate. I can tell you I'm not lying to you. I'm here to tell you wisdom from God. And I'm here to tell you what the Spirit of God is saying. I can tell you, many of you that are in marriage, you know that there are times when feelings were dead. But why, what keeps you going there? It's understanding. It, there is a deeper revelation you have that love is beyond just the feeling. Love is a commitment. Love is a decision. You decide, you make a decision that I love this person. Even if they are a thorn in the flesh, I'm going to love them. Even if they annoy me, I'm going to love them with their annoyance. Even if sometimes they, they make me angry, I'm going to love them. That is love. It's not a hyper feeling and a superficial feeling of some kind where you're always feeling like, oh my God. There are times where understanding keeps you going. understanding keeps you going. Dennis, talk to you. Talk to you. <sighs> I don't know if I'm talking to you. I don't know if I'm talking to you. So when you're saying you're preparing for marriage, you prepare your heart. You prepare your mind. Your mind, psychologically. You have to understand that the moment you get into marriage, you that's equally death. Marriage if I can define marriage in one word, it's death. It's death. If they ask you what is marriage, it's death. Man of God, why do you call it death? Because you are dead to self. You are dead to independence. You are dead to selfishness. You are dead to uh, sullenness, or I don't know. Everything you do now, you have to consider someone. Everything you do, it's not a place of ego. It's not a place of me, myself, and I. Dennis is laughing. Marriage is death. So if you are not prepared to die to self, don't get into marriage. People get into marriage, yet they, they want to continue with their individualism. The Bible is very clear. The two shall be one flesh. Meaning to say you are no longer yourself. You are, you, you, there is another flesh added to you. The two shall be one flesh. That's why there is divorce. Because people get into it without understanding it. The two shall be one flesh. I'm not telling things from my heart. I'm telling things from the script. And the man shall leave his parents and his uh, the, 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 the two shall be one flesh. One flesh. They shall be one flesh. In other words, they are one now. They are joined. They are one. They are one flesh. They are one. They are one flesh. So what happens? That means you are no longer yourself. Person from USA, how are you? There is somebody that has become part of your life. So you have to die to self. You have to die to ego. You have to die to pride. You have to consider others, someone's feelings. You have to die. That's exactly what it means. Mm. You have to allow somebody to call you to order because that person is part of you. Has a right to know where you are. Has a right to know what you are doing. Has a right to know the time you are coming. Has a right to know. If you are not willing to be asked all these things, if you are not willing to be accountable, don't get into it. Because that's a place of accountability. You have to be accountable. You have to be accountable. You have to be accountable. Mm. That's a true man of God. You have to be accountable. Somebody is phoning you to try and hear where you are. And you say, oh, they, are brother, they are bothering me. Why are they doing that? That's a sign of care. They have to check which the other part of them. Because you are part, 
is part of you now. This person has to know where you are. Are you okay? Are you safe? Are you all right? So if somebody calls you to check where they are, where, where you are, don't shout and say, why do you check? Why are you checking? No, no, no. They are, that's love. That's how love is expressed in that situation. They love you because they want to know what is going on. Never listen to this doctrine from the pit of hell. This is anti-marriage, conspiracy against, against marriage. Where you are told that private life, yes. Private life and um, my private time. You don't have to ask me where I go and all those things. That is conspiracy. Because that is how the enemy has made a mockery of this institution. Because the world is trying to define what marriage is. How can the world define marriage? The world, nobody can define marriage except the one who created it. That is God who, who pioneered marriage. Nobody can come and stand here and tell us that there is something that is called, um, what do they call it, open relationship, where I can go out of my house at, at my own time and nobody asks me and I come back and uh, you don't ask me, I don't ask you. Oh, come on. That's a conspiracy and a mockery. And I understand their situation. Their situation where you have given your all. I do understand. Their situation is where you have given your all. And you have tried everything that is written and it's not working. You just have to pray to God. Whether God wants to release you from there or whether you need more strength and grace to enjoy trusting the Lord that there will be change in the course of time. Yes, some relationship God wants us to endure. Because in the insurance, you are going to save that person. That person may change. But there are certain relationships, maybe if you have given your all, ask God to release you. Yes. Mm. Yeah. There are places where you just have to make sure that you have given yourself time. Pray, 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 and make sure God himself releases you. Yeah, that's my my position. Plus, there are times when we say, "Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave," and then you find that somebody is going to die in the process. Die in the process. Okay. So that's how you handle that. Time spent on preparation is never time wasted. Prepare yourself. Get time to prepare. Get time to prepare. Get time to prepare. Get time to prepare. I was talking about Jesus preparing for 30 years and doing ministry for three years. Sometimes it's not how long you have been doing something, it's how effective. So sometimes you can take a long time doing something. Somebody can do it in a short time, yet in an effective way. Jesus, 30 years of preparation, three years of ministry is done. Doesn't need a lot of time because he is so sharpened. He is so prepared for it. He is so precise about what he's doing. So precise about what he's doing. Don't rush. If you rush, you crash. Somebody write and say, if you rush, you crash. Don't rush. If you rush, you crash. Take your time. Anything that is equipping you, take your time on it. Don't rush. Though. You may jump the gun in certain situations, but later it will catch up with you. You may jump the gun on certain areas, but you'll see that later on it will catch up with you. Memory, I pray for you. May God touch you and deliver you from whatever you're facing. There are many that rushed, that rushed 
before they got enough equipping, enough guidance, enough guidance. And when they got in, you may jump the gun, but there is a place that you find out, hmm, I wish I had listened. I wish I had learned more about this situation. I wish I had learned about this thing. Bible talks of testing time. Testing time is going to come to everyone. And you cannot, there's nothing you and me can do about it. Whether you're a good person. Yes, that's true. You go on. The, you and me, whether we are good or bad, there is testing time that is coming. Whether you are good, whether you are prayerful, you cannot pray away testing time. It will come. That's why the Bible, Jesus gave two examples of two men that built houses. He said, one person said, the one that hear my words, I would liken you to a man that built a house on the rock. Do you know to build a house on the rock is very difficult? Digging foundation on the rock, you have to use dynamite to, 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 to create that foundation on the rock. It is a mammoth task. You may take, I don't know, to, 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 to establish that foundation. But once the building is established on the rock, that is a massive building. It will never face any problem. But Jesus also gave an example of a man who went, who went the easy way. Easy way, easy come, easy go. You went and dig a foundation on the sand. Quickly. Sometimes we want fast things. But we don't, we're not worried about the foundation. That one on the rock is busy blowing dynamites because you have to blow dynamites the rock is hard to establish a foundation it will take him maybe the whole year trying to build and jesus said when the floods came they started to beat on the houses the one on the sand was washed away but that on the rock remained standing what jesus is trying to say to tell you is testing time is going to come testing time is going to come you can't stop it. Actually, the Bible talks about the evil day in the book of Ephesians chapter one, chapter 6. What does the Bible say in, in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6? I might need to read for you that one. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read for, for, for you quickly. Uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Listen to this, listen to this. And finally, 6 verse um, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against uh, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and helplessness. Wherefore, verse 13, I want verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Do you, do, do, do you take note of something? Verse 18. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Somebody say the evil day. I want somebody to say, to, to, to write, everybody write, say the evil day. Write there and say the evil day. Write, write for me. Say the evil day. Say the evil day. Say the evil day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nir. Say evil day. That evil day. The Bible says, put on the armor of God. Why? Why must you put on the armor of God? The Bible says, so that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Meaning to say, the evil day is going to come. It, it is going to come. There's nothing you can do about it coming. It's coming. You cannot pray it away. It is coming. But you should not worry about the evil day. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Your own is to put on the armor of God. That's your own. Say, Apostle, even to Apostle, who's talking to you, evil day is coming. So, Apostle, should you be worried about the evil day? No. What should you be worried about? Do I have the armor of God? That's what I should be worried about. I'm not worried about the evil day coming. I'm worried about the armor. Otherwise, it is coming, that evil day. And that evil day must not find you without the whole armor. Because if it finds you without the whole armor, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. 
Man of God, go and prosper. Go and prosper in that interview. Get that job and may everything be favorable in Jesus' name. So the evil day is coming. This is true, pure gospel. I'm not just trying to excite you. I'm telling you the truth. The evil day is coming. But let me tell you, family, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of the evil day. Don't be afraid of the evil day. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of the evil day. Just put on the whole armor of God. If you have the armor, you have no need. There's no reason for you to be afraid of what is coming. If your house is built on the rock, there's no reason for you to be afraid of what is coming. The rock is the revelation. The rock is the revelation. That revelation you have. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Even Jesus himself, he did not just build his church careless. On it, or he said, I will build my church on the rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What Jesus is saying is that the, the gates of hell prevail. Let me tell you the word prevail. Let me tell you what the, mean, the meaning of the word prevail. The word prevail means that there is opposition. So when the Bible says something is prevailing, for example, my hands are pushing each other. Okay, let me say this is my what? This is my right hand. Am I right? Left hand. So they are pushing each other. So there is a there is there is a a, 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 a a struggle. There's a wrestling going on. They are pushing each other. What is the meaning of the word prevail? Let us just say the right hand is going to prevail. What happens? The right hand pushes the left hand. That's prevailing. You prevail against the force that is trying to hold you. So Jesus is saying, the gates of hell shall not prevail. That means it, the gates of hell will try. The gates of hell will try. It will try, but it will not prevail. But there will be a struggle. There will be a force that will be trying, but it will not prevail. It will not prevail, but there will be a struggle. So Jesus is saying, the secret of the church, it will be built upon the rock, the revelation. That is why many of us, we can't stand the testing time. In a, a small thing that we are crushed, small thing we are crushed because we are not built on the rock. If you are built on the rock, you will not be crushed. If you are built on the rock, you will not uh, be overwhelmed. You will not despair. You will not be broken down. You will not. You are built on the rock. Nothing will prevail against you. Even discouragement, it will come, but you will find yourself standing. Yes, it may push you there and there, but you find your, yourself standing. Is it uh, a loss? Is it a uh, rejection? It will come, but it will not cause you to, it will not break you. Memory, I pray for you. May God see you through, give you strength. And I pray that the will of God be done in your life. Are you, are you, are you, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? The foundation. Many believers are not going to pass the test of time. Because the, the gospel that is being preached right now, it's just addressing symptoms. Maybe it's just saying, ah, receive breakthrough here, receive breakthrough there. Shalom, how are you? Receive breakthrough there and what, what, what. But it's not equipping you as a believer. It's not equipping you to be built and to be established in Jesus Christ. Your relationship is number one priority. Remember, your relationship with Jesus is number one priority. What God wants from you is not for you just to prosper. No, it's not just for you to have a car, have a house, have money. That's the simplest things. Those are small things. God wants to have a deeper relationship with you, a deeper relationship with you. That's the priority that God has. for. That's, that's number one priority. That's what God seeks to have with you. And all these other things are, 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 are secondary. Oh my Jesus. That's what God wants to have with you. That's what he wants to have with you. That's what he wants to have with you. Relationship. So when we develop our relationship with God, when we develop our relationship with God, we become strong even when testing time comes. We are not moved. We are not moved. We remain firm. We remain strong. Against all adversity, we are strong. 
against all adversity. Let me read something for you in the book of uh, Colossians. Colossians. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Colossians chapter 2. Oh, my Jesus. Verse 6. Hear this. Verse 6. Verse 6. I used to hear. Tap on the screen. You can drop your comment. So I see you are listening. As you, therefore, received Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him. That is verse 6. Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. Underline the word rooted. Underline the word built up. These are key words. Rooted. 6 and 7 years. Rooted and built up in him. Ah, yeah. These are very key words. We have to be rooted. We have to be built up in him. Rooted and built up in him. So you have therefore received the Lord Jesus. Walk you in him. Many have received, but they are failing to walk in him. Many have received him, but they are not rooted. They are not built up in him. Be built up. Be rooted. Be rooted. And established in faith. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So you need to be rooted and to be built up in him. You need to be rooted and to be built up in him. As you have received him. So that when testing time comes, you overcome. You overcome. My Jesus. You will not be moved by things. You will not be afraid of things. You will not, even if you go through things, because you are rooted, you are not moved. You go through things, you overcome. You conquer. You conquer. The Bible says, what? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Do you still remember these scriptures? Let me remind you. Do you still remember these scriptures? Are they still in your heart, these scriptures? Because the way you are so, so disoriented does shows you are forgetting what God has said. I'm here to remind you. Romans chapter 8. Okay. Romans chapter 8. Open your Bibles. Open your Bibles if you have your Bible. If you have it on your phone, it's okay. It says on verse 31, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? My Jesus. If God be for us, who can be against us? Do you believe that God is for you? So are you afraid now of that situation? Are you afraid? Do you believe that God is for you? Let somebody write and say, God is for me. Write it down. Declare and say, God is for me. Say, God is for me. I want to see you writing it. God is for me. Write it so that it sinks in your heart. God is for me. Bible says, if God is for us, I, I don't want you to put us, put yourself, personalize it. Be selfish. I allow you to be selfish. Say, God is for me. Be selfish a little bit. Say, God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. In that situation you are facing, God is for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Be selfish. I, I, I'm permitting you at, at just this moment to be selfish. Some of you, you never also consider yourselves. See, there are people that love others and they forget to love themselves. There are people that do things for others and they forget to treat themselves. I've seen, I've seen people that help other people until they themselves cannot take care of them. I was counseling a certain lady. Uh, I hope she's here or she's not here, but it's not a problem. I'm sure she doesn't mind me talking about it because I'm not going to mention her name. I spoke to the lady. She said, man of God, my finances are in a mess. My finances are not even... They are in a mess. Everything about my finances is bad. And God just ministered to me when I was talking to her. God ministered to me. And God said to me, she is over giving. She is over giving. That's what God told me. I said to her, are you saying you get a good salary? She said, yes, man of God, I get a very good salary. And my salary is good enough for me to live. But at the end of the month, I'll be struggling. I even go to borrow. And I said to her, I tried to speak something. She said, man of God, that one is not a problem. I checked, I checked. I do my checks about things. 
And then I said, God is telling me you are over giving. I said, what man of God? I never thought about it. I said, look, you give to a level where you give the last, but at the end of the day, you are left in a position of struggle. After you, you can take even what you have and give and give and give and give. And uh, I said to you, do you realize that God, put your hand here on, on, on Romans chapter 8. I'm coming back there. Let me explain this. I said to you, do you realize the Bible talks, God gives two things. I am not being controversial. I know what I'm talking about. Listen to me very carefully. God in the book of Corinthians gives two things. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. These two things God gives. He gives you seed. He gives you bread. So take note of this. You need to understand the seed from what God has given you. And you need to understand the bread. If God gives you the seed, don't eat the seed. Because if you eat the seed, you will not have harvest. Are you following? But then also, if God gives you the bread, don't give your bread because the bread is for you to eat. If you give your seed and your seed is finished, wait for God to give you another seed. Don't go ahead and give bread. Many of you here, you give seed. After you give seed, you go ahead and give bread. And now you are left without. Don't give your bread because your bread is for you to enjoy. Your bread is for you to enjoy. When God is giving you bread, he wants you to be taken care of. He's providing. Give us today our daily bread. It's for you to enjoy. And when God is giving you seed, he wants you to sow the seed. Don't eat the seed because you will not have the harvest. But also, don't eat the bread. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? If I'm talking to you, let me know. If I'm talking to you, let me know. Come on, somebody. If I'm talking to you, let me know, please. I want to know if you're following. If I'm talking to you, let me know. Let me know in the comment section if I'm talking to you. Don't give your bread. Don't give your bread. Bread is for you to eat. Seed to the soul. Bread to the eater. So, I spoke to the lady. I said, you know what? You are giving seed. And after you give seed, you also go ahead and give bread. And at the end of the day, you struggle. So I say to the lady, I know you've got a strong and bigger heart. I know you love the Lord. I know you are so zealous. I'm begging you. I'll send it to you. What I will do, um, W894, I will post this message on YouTube. Uh, so what you can do is to have my YouTube because it's too long for me to send it to you. You go on YouTube. You can download it on YouTube and you can watch it on YouTube. So make sure you go on my profile here. Um, let me pin your, 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 your comment. You go on my TikTok profile. There is a YouTube icon. Click my YouTube icon. Go to YouTube. It, subscribe to my channel. And after that, all these encounters, I'll post them there. I'll post all these encounters on YouTube. So all of you that wants to have this recording or you want to have this information again, keep it. You can go to YouTube. I'll, I'll upload all this on YouTube. Please, please, you can watch it there. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Double Eight Nine Four. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I gave this woman counsel. I said to you, you are giving your bread. She said, man of God, I never realized. I never realized. So I said to you, I know you love God. I know you are sealers. I know sometimes you, you can take your last. I said, can you at for once? Can you for once treat yourself? Take yourself out. All right, take yourself out. Give your seed. I'm not stopping you to give your seed. Give whatever you want to give your tithe, whatever you want to give your seed. But after that, please, can you keep, after you have given, tell yourself this month I want to give this one. After you have given them, can you take the rest and go and treat yourself? <clears throat> go, treat yourself. Just give yourself some treat. She gave heed to my advice. She said, man of God, thank you so much. She even came back to appreciate. She said, man of God, the month was so beautiful. Because she said, I, I would feel bad. I said, don't feel bad. What you can help, you can help. What you can't, don't feel bad. We are, we, let me tell you, you are not called to help everybody. That's a fact. You are not called to help everybody. There are certain people that you will not even help. That's a fact. That's a fact. Do you realize that there were many blind people that Jesus did not open their eyes? Do you agree with me? 
Do you agree with me? Jesus never went about raising, raising everybody from the dead. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Jesus did not go about looking for dead people to raise them, though he had power to raise people. There is actually a time when Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Did he not say that? Let the dead bury their dead. And I want you to understand the bread and the seed. I'm not saying stop giving, but you have to ask the Holy Spirit, what is the seed? When the Holy Spirit has told you this is the give the seed, when you have given the seed, please, the rest, put it to, to use. Develop your life. Develop your life. Develop your life. AK, thank you so much. Develop your life. Okay. So Jesus never went about raising every dead person. No. Even blind but me. Do you realize that Jesus passed blind but me as he passed him? Do you realize that he passed him? He had already passed him. If blind but near had not shouted, he was going to be, we would not know about him. He would be blind. He had to inquire from people. What is this noise I'm hearing? What is this noise? And the people said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing. Blind but near started shouting, Son of David, have mess on me. Son of David, have mess on me. Son of David, have mess on me. And Jesus heard the noise and said, come here. What do you want me to do for you? I want to see. Receive your sight. Sarah, thank you so much. Oh, come on. Where are my gifters? Sarah, thank you so much. My gifters, my gifters. If God is blessing you, respond. Oh my God. Listen. Jesus did not go about raising everyone from the dead. Mm -mm. He did not do that. He only raised those God directed him. He only raised those God directed him. So you need to understand as a man, you are not called to everybody. Even myself, I've told you time without number. My ministry is not to everyone. There are people that I actually don't receive me. And I don't have a problem with that. I know other ministers of gospel who will touch them. There, there is somebody that may come here and they won't receive me. I should not feel bad. I am not called to minister to everybody. I might be called to you. You are here. When you see me, you feel happy because what I mean is that the anointing moves in your life. You are impacted by the anointing. But somebody else may not receive me. It happens. Because I'm not called to everybody. There is an audience that is meant to listen to me. I have to pray to God to connect me to that audience. There is a people that are called to be my audience. The moment they see me, they have joy in their heart. They have joy in their heart. They know this is it. This is the man of God. This is my man of God. S straight away, this is my man of God. Just one statement is good enough for them to know this is my man of God. Let us bless you. They know one word is enough for them to know this is my man of God. That is why when you are praying, not every man of God is your man of God. Do you know that there is a man of God that might be on, be on TV? me about the seed. I don't understand. Tell me, what are you talking about about the seed? Are you talking of seed or seed? I mean, clarify, clarify, please. Clarify. Clarify what you're asking. I will help you. Even somebody that might, another man of God may be coming, showing on the TV and uh, maybe he's doing wonders. He's helping a lot of people. It doesn't necessarily follow that you have to go there. Because maybe a lot of people are going there. Find out from God if that man of God is for you. Because even when you go there, I've seen people who travel. They visit a great man of God. They come back, they are frustrated. And they start cursing. Why did you just go there and before you ask the Lord, is this the right man of God? Some, someone who might not be on TV can be a man of God. And when you go there, he's going to help you. He's going to pray for you. Your things will open. Your breakthrough will be released. Doesn't necessarily follow that if somebody is coming on TV and you go to them and pray for you, things will work for you. It doesn't necessarily follow. Yes, let me help you. It doesn't necessarily follow. You may go there, come back, and things are the same. So it is God who directs you to an anointing that works for you. 
God directs you to an anointing that begins to work for you. What is the difference about seed and offering? Oh, yes, therapy. Seed and offering, there are two different kinds of offerings. I mean, not, not two kinds, there are many kinds of offerings. An offering, there is free will offering. Free will offering is something that you just purpose in your heart right now. If I say, let us give, for example, at the end of this uh at the end of this uh, session, I usually invite people to give. Those who want to give offering, those who want to sow seed, they can sow. Those who want to give. Right, let me explain offering. Offering is free will offering. Where you just decide in purpose, okay, let me give 50 rand, let me give uh, $100, let me give what? That's what you purpose in your heart. It's free will offering. And of course, there is sacrificial offering where you sacrifice, where you feel like, I want to sacrifice. Give a sacrifice. It's something that you do it needs time this one but let me just try to rush through okay let me just try to rush through it needs time and then there is um a seed is something that you do usually for a purpose a seed has got a purpose when somebody is sowing a seed for example you sow a seed because you want to have a certain a certain thing you don't just sow a seed without an intention a seed is intentional. You can sow a seed because of something. There is something. Maybe there is something you want to attract. That's why seeds are named. Seeds are named. Maybe you are sowing a seed. Maybe it's for, you must name it for financial breakthrough. Maybe for promotion. That's, that's how I understand seed. It is intentional. It is targeting something. Maybe it has to have a mission. Maybe you want promotion. You say, I want to plant a seed towards my promotion. I want to plant a seed maybe towards my marriage, towards restoration. Like a seed has got name. You sow maize cob. You reap maize cob. You sow groundnuts. You reap maize. So it is specific. You cannot just sow a general seed and expect to reap everything there. A seed is specific. Whereas an offering, you leave it to God. God rewards you. Sometimes you give you a free will offering. God chooses how he rewards you. Maybe he gives you mercy. But a seed is specific to what you want, what you are believing God for. I don't know if I've, if I've explained, but uh, it may need time, yes. So a seed is specific. A seed is very specific, uh, Zebin. Did I, did I explain? It may need more time, uh, but I just tried to rush through. Did I explain? Whereas a free, of, free will offering, you can't say, I, I give free offering, I want this in return. A free offering, you give it to God. It's up to God. Sometimes when you give a free offer, God gives you mercy. God gives you um, divine health. God gives you long life. He chooses what to do. But a seed is very specific. Very, very specific. Very, very specific. Mm. Very, very specific. Yes. 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 Mm. Thank you so much, Seb. Thank you, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So what happens is, um, I believe Solomon, let me give you an example, Tzapi. Others are also learning. The Bible says Solomon offered a thousand sacrifices at Mount Gibeah. A thousand sacrifices. A thousand sacrifices. I think this was just more than an offering. A thousand sacrifices. A sacrifice is something that is very difficult. If you are giving a sacrificial offering, it's not the ordinary offering you always give. For example, if I give maybe a hundred rand as a free will offering. If I'm giving a sacrificial offering, maybe it will be 2,000. That's a sacrificial offering or something that you don't usually give. So Solomon sacrificed, give a sacrificial offering and God appeared to Solomon and said, what do you want me to do for you? The reason why God asked Solomon to say, what do you want me to do for you? It was intentional. Solomon did this to provoke something from the Lord. That's why God had to appear and ask him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, I want wisdom. God gave him wisdom and wealth on top of that. So there are certain giving that definitely is provocative. You want to provoke a certain move. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. And that's my secret. That's my secret. That's my secret to unlock certain doors. If I see that mm, this door is giving me a problem, I pray for something. I pray for something. If I see that this thing is giving me a problem in prayer, I prayed for it, but there's no shift. I change. I start planting seeds to all that thing, that thing. That's my secret. I start planting seeds to all that area. And that's how I have seen breakthrough happening. 
uh, Stella, how are you? Oh my Jesus. My God, I have to go now. I have to go. 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 Any more questions before I go? I want to pray for Mantu. The Mantu that I'm going to pray for today. My Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my Jesus. Oh my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Mantu that I'm going to pray for today. I want to pray for the harvest anointing. I know some of you, you say, man, I've got to be doing this. I've been doing this. But I've not seen a reward. I want to release your harvest. So the mantle that I'm going to pray for today is for the harvest. I want God to bring you to your season of harvest. Season of harvest. That's why I want to pray a harvest mantle where you will begin to see your harvest. Not only see it, but enjoy it. Not only see it, but also enjoy it. That's what I want to pray for you today. Oh my Jesus. Glory to God. Lift up your mantles. If you have your mantle ready, say I'm ready. If you have your mantle ready, say I'm ready. If you have your mantle ready, say I'm ready. I want to pray. Let me pray for this, then we'll deal with the other things after the prayer. What is your mantle? Your water, your anointing oil, everything you want to use as a point of conduct. Lift it. Let me pray for a harvest mantle. Lift it, lift it, lift it right now. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, remember them, your people who have taken their time to listen to the word of God with all diligence. Look at them and have mercy on them. Look at that woman and have mercy on her. Look at that man and have mercy on him. That man cry, that man going through things. Look at them, oh God. Have mercy on them. I pray for them. Some of them are going through stuff. Some of them are facing difficult situation. My father, my king, I beseech you, touch them. Look at them and deliver them. Pull them out of their situation. Pull them out of their difficulties. Pull them out of their struggles. In the name of Jesus, I pray today for an anointing of harvest. I anoint those mantles for harvest. Let them trigger chain events of harvest. Let them trigger chain events of greater harvest, greater rewards, greater returns in the name of Jesus. Greater returns in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, thou spirit of truth, thou spirit of comfort, thou sweet spirit, locate them right now. Distance is never a barrier. Wherever they are, touch them. In the mighty name of Jesus, some of them, Lord, they've been stuck in that place for a long time. They are trying the best they can, but it's not working. They are trying the best they can, but there is so much resistance. Dear Lord Jesus, today I beseech you, look at them and have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy upon them. Have mercy upon them. Rescue them out of their poverty. Rescue them out of debt. Rescue them out of their deepest hurts. Rescue them out of their rejection. Rescue them out of their limitation. In the name of Jesus, comfort those that mourn. Bless the poor. Fill their houses with good things. Bring joy to their hearts in the name of Jesus. Bring joy to their hearts in the name of Jesus. Deliver them from those that hurt them. Deliver them from those that are pursuing their soul. Those that are seeking for their souls to destroy. Deliver them from every wicked hand. Deliver them from every witchcraft. Deliver them from every snare of darkness. Deliver them from every demon hunting for their souls. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy, son of David. Have mercy upon them now. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
let them receive that phone call let them receive good news in the mighty name of Jesus let them receive that money let them receive Lord God let their expectation be fulfilled let their desire be fulfilled in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for the anointing of harvest in Jesus mighty name I pray for them in Jesus mighty name I pray for them Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Oh my Jesus. You are anointed. You are anointed. Tonight, don't worry. What? God is with you. You are anointed. Anoint yourself with that mantle. Receive good news. Instant miracle. My Jesus. Oh my God. I'm going to leave you here. But as always, the door is open for those that feel the Lord is moving you to plant your seed. I don't know what you are believing God for. You feel like I need to plant a seed containing this area. I received a message this morning from a certain lady. He said, man of God, when I planted my seed, they have called me for an interview. Thank you so much. I was specifically planting my seed towards a new job. And she's gone for an interview. She's very happy and excited. I like it when people see the evidence of what we are teaching that it is true, it is not a lie. So those who want to plant seeds, um, you are welcome to do that. Send your seed, you can send a message to my inbox here. Yes, Bridge Trends, how are you? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You can send your seed, you can send a message, a direct message for the new, those who want to plant for the first time, you don't have the details, send a message directly here. I'll give you my number um, or, or, or I'll respond to your message. So if you want to plant your seed, give your offering, any giving that you want to do, you can come to my uh, directly to... Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bridge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for your testimony. Oh my God. Who is this, Sarah? I pray for your son in the name of Jesus. Let your son be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Let your son be cured in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Uh, let me try to put my number here for those who, who, who need my number. All right, here's my number. Here's my number. Okay, my number is there. My number is there for those who need my number. Okay, let me see if I can pin it. Yeah, it, it allowed me to pin today. My number is pinned on the screen. So if you want to plant your seed, just send a direct message either to that number on WhatsApp or direct here on TikTok and say, man of God, I want to plant a seed. I'll give you the details. Plant your seed and see the miracle uh, that you want to see in that area you're planting a seed. But if you want to just give and support the ministry, do likewise. Just uh, send a direct message and I'll give you the details. You can sow also through, uh, we have paper, we have cash up uh, and also other channels. So just send a direct message and we'll see. Uh, what is the best method you can use? God bless you and God be with you as you do that. I pray for every sower and every gifter. May God bless you abundantly, increase you in the name of Jesus. May you never lack. I pray in Jesus' name. Be increased. May, may, may you receive favor with God and favor with men. May whatever you touch become gold. Whatever you touch shall prosper. Receive hundredfold. Receive hundredfold. Receive hundredfold. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, I heard ugly demons screaming. It's going. It's going in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, men of God, for being a pillar of strength. I treasure you. Man of God, may God bless you. You have been uh, a pillar to this ministry from day one. You have been there from day one. You are so consistent. May God bless you for me. And everybody that is here, you have been coming from day one. May the Lord bless you. Uh, if any, if from Nigeria, how are you doing? May God bless you. So thank you very much. Send a direct message and I'll talk to you there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the night encounter. Uh, remember, you can watch these messages on YouTube. So I'll upload these messages on YouTube. So you check for this message. You'll find it. And uh, those of you who have not subscribed to the YouTube here, yeah, just go and click the, the YouTube icon on this TikTok profile. It will take you to YouTube. Subscribe there. 
and you watch these messages at your own time. Thank you very much. I love you so much. Remember to love God is to obey his word and to make his word a standard for our lives. Go you therefore and be doers of the word. God cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. Your brother, your friend, your prayer partner, Apostle El Gangada. Shalom. <laughs>